This is the Ramana Maharshi 40 Verses on Reality Satsang, a time for self-reflection and self-inquiry. Know yourself and be always free and at peace. Welcome. I'm Richard Clark, hosting this satsang. I'm a seeker, like you, sharing what we love. I've been blessed with years of deep teaching, and I bring this to you in this satsang. The background image is the old hall in Ramana Ashram. This is where Ramana sat and visitors would meditate and sometimes ask questions. Ramana said that his deepest teaching was silence. This was the main location in the ashram when 40 verses on reality was composed. 40 verses on reality was written in 1928 by Ramana Maharshi at the request of Maruganar, who wanted a concise synopsis of Ramana's teachings and wanted 40 verses to fit in a classical Hindu form. Maruganar asked Sri Ramana to write the text to, quote, reveal to us the nature of reality and the means by which we can attain it so that we may be saved, end quote. Ramana wrote the verses as they came to him and Muruganar arranged them. Later, Ramana wrote an additional 40 verses and the original 40 verses were put into a supplement to the 40 verses. The final set of verses are in this booklet. About a quarter of the verses were composed by Ramana originally in Tamil. Many of the others were adaptations that he composed of verses by other authors and other texts. Advaita, non-duality. Your identity is the supreme doctrine expressed in these verses. Jhana Marga, the path of knowledge, is the approach to it. Self-inquiry, who am I, is the technique Ramana taught for this path. There is no more profound and comprehensive statement of it than his 40 verses on reality. Now, on to this week's reading from 40 Verses. Today is we start with the invocation to the text. This is the first of two sections. And uh, now Ramana Maharshi's words, if reality did not exist, could there be any knowledge of existence? Free from all thoughts, reality abides in the heart the source of all thoughts. It is therefore called the heart. How then is one to contemplate it, to be as it is in the heart, is its contemplation. Now this verse sets out the entire teaching. First is reality. If there was no reality, 
would you even exist? But you do exist and you know that you exist. You know reality directly and immediately. To notice this reality, all you have to do is to look within yourself. Reality is everywhere in our experience. If we trace this reality to where it comes from, we find that it comes from deep within, deeper than any thought. This reality is there even when thoughts are not. Thoughts appear in reality, not the other way around. So if you trace the origin of the sense of reality within you, you'll find the open space of consciousness. This open space of consciousness is your own real identity. It remains always and is untouched by everything you think affects you, like your body, emotions, and thought. It is at the core of your being, the heart. Without this consciousness, your mind is inert. Therefore, consciousness is at the source of all thoughts. This is not some physical heart. This is awareness, this knowingness that is at the core of your own being, your own existence. Ramana asks, how then is one to contemplate it? Some try to meditate on their body's heart. They may have great experiences, but this heart within the body is an object. It is known. To go much deeper, ask, who knows this heart? and plunge into what my teacher, Nomi, calls non-objective knowledge. It is non-objective rather than subjective, since subjective is part of the duality of subject-object, and who you are is non-dual. So Nomi says non-objective. You can't ever look at consciousness since consciousness is not an object and can't be known as an object. So when you look for consciousness, it is both everywhere and nowhere at the same time. That's why one ancient expression for who you are is, quote, the unknown knower of all the known. So you cannot contemplate your own being. All you can do is to be it and know that you are it at the same deep level that you know that you exist. Now, some notes on practice. What we are really seeking, what we really want to know is within ourselves. One way to find it is to inquire, look deep within, questioning, is this who I am? and noticing everything that comes and goes. How can you be anything that comes and goes? You do not come and go. What is it that does not come and go that is within you always? This must be 
who you are, just notice. Also ask, is this objective to me, known by me? If so, you are the knower and not the known. So if it is objective to you, it cannot be you. Now, on to our videos this week. First is from a Sarva Priyananda, and he is going to tell us the ultimate truth. He says, Na muktaha, not free. If there is nobody who is free. What does that mean? What, how do you explain the enlightened people? All of these people, Ramana Maharshi, and so many others uh, all throughout history, they were free, enlightened people. How do you explain that? What he means to say here is, there is freedom, but nobody who is free. What does that mean? To explain that, let me give another example. Um, I have earlier mentioned this example, Nisarga Dattav, somebody pointed out to him, he was regarded as an enlightened being. He lived in Mumbai a few decades ago, in a slum, which is regarded as an enlightened being. That book is there, very popular, I Am That. Somebody said to him, you are an enlightened being, you are Brahma Jnani, you are a knower of Brahman. And immediately he reacted in annoyance and he said, and just as a way of teaching, he said, you are insulting me. Insulting you? Knower of Brahman, that's the highest praise you can give in our civilization. The knower of the absolute. He said, I am not Brahma Jnani, I am Brahman. I am not a knower of Brahman, I am Brahman. Pointing out thereby the secret of enlightenment. When you are enlightened, when you know that the Absolute, Turiya, it's not as an object. I know the Turiya, I know the Satchidananda, I know the Absolute, I know Brahman. No, no. You are that. That's what you realize. You are not a person who realizes the Absolute. If you are a person who says, I know the Absolute, then you do not know. The Kain Upanishad says, he who uh, claims that he knows, does not know. He who, who knows that it cannot be known as an object, knows, truly knows. So, you are not a person who lives eternally. You are that eternal existence itself, Sat. You are not a person who knows that ultimate reality. You are that knowledge itself, Chit. You are not a person who enjoys various kinds of blissful experiences. You are that bliss itself. Swami Vivekananda put it directly. Not that it exists, it is existence itself. Not that it knows something, it is knowledge itself. Not that it is happy, it is happiness itself. Sat, Chit, Ananda. When you become an enlightened person, you are not a Brahma Jnani. You are Jnana Swarupa, knowledge itself. You are not somebody who lives eternally in this particular body. You are eternal existence itself. You are not somebody who has lots of bliss in the mind. You are bliss itself. In the same way, you are not somebody, follow this carefully, you are not somebody who has become free. You are freedom itself. You are not a person who is mukta, literally the word mukta means a person who is free. The person is never free. You become free of the you become free of the person. The person does not become free. You think of yourself as a person now. You you will see when you step back from that into your real nature, Turiyam, you're free of the person. The person will still appear, do its job. Every night it will disappear in deep sleep. And one day in death of the body, that personality also will disappear. But you, the infinite existence, which is the background of the person. <clears throat> you still exist. That is freedom, not a person who becomes free. In that sense, na muktaha. You're not a person who becomes free. This is ittyesha paramarthata. This is the highest teaching, ultimate truth.
truth. What is this ultimate truth? One reality, see one reality in Samadhi, in the deepest meditation, in your waking world here, one reality. In the highest heaven and in the lowest, most infernal hell, I will say boldly, see that one reality, Turiya. They appear in you and disappear in you. In the heights of happiness and success, in the depths of misery and frustration and failure, one shining reality, Turiya. And thus you are free. Stand upon that, establish yourself in that, your real nature. All these are mirages and dreams which come, enjoy them when they come and go. Don't try to, uh, one Zen saying which I liked very much, playing of one thing against the other, desiring one thing that it should be so and it should not be so, this is the disease of the mind. Why is it the disease of the mind? Now we realize this should be so and that should not be so. I like this and I do not like this. Both of them are you, the consciousness. It shows an ignorance, a preference for this and a dislike for the other. It shows that you do not realize the one reality behind both. Such a person will not criticize. Everybody that you meet, everything that happens to you is a manifestation of the light of the divine, your own light. You yourself appear. Whom to blame, whom to praise? This is Vivekananda's lines. One only exists. Whom to blame, whom to praise? Praiser, praised, blamer, blamed are but one. And that one is you. This is the ultimate truth. Vedanta points this out. And now, if you ask Vedanta, you made everything <laughs> false. There's nobody, bondage is false, uh, spiritual practice is false, the seeker is false, liberated, liberated person is false, everything is false. Then what about you, Mr. Vedanta? Are you true or false? I'm, I'm translating as Mr. Vedanta because the Swami originally said who taught this. He said, Or Vedanta Babu, aap kya hai? <laughs> Mr. Be or Master Vedanta, what are you? True or false? And you know what Vedanta replies? I too am false. Then what is the truth? You are the truth. My only job was to show the falsity of the world, Jagat Mithyatva and point towards the truth which you always wear. Having pointed uh, that out, please excuse me now, release me, let me go. I am also false. Don't hold on to me as the truth. Even Advaita says, it's also a methodology to point out the truth, the one truth which you are. Once you have got that, then let this go also. But warning, Vedanta leaves with a warning. Before you realize the illusory nature of the world appearance, before you realize the falsity of the world, before that if you consider me to be false, then you are trapped forever. You are trapped forever. You must use me to dissolve the world problem and leave yourself as the background, the adhishthana, the ground of that appearance. You are the only reality. This is the ultimate truth. I pray to the Lord that may we get this intuition in our very life, make this breakthrough. When once you walk through these doors and you look back upon the world and see it as yourself shining forth, the work is done. Mm -hmm. In Buddha's, Edwin Arnold, the song, um, in, uh, there's a beautiful uh, poem he wrote about the light of Asia. No more is birth, no more is death, no more shall delusion weave her charms, uh, you know. Uh, the, I, I have known thee, this delusion of the world, and thy rafters and the roof of magic and spells, it's broken forever. I see the truth now, I am the awakened. I'm paraphrasing, this is, his original words were much more beautiful. May we all get to say that in this very life itself. We realize the truth which is already ours. It's already ours. It exists now in full measure, right now. We just have to see it. With prayers to Thakur Ma and Swamiji, with their blessings, may we realize this great consummation, this, great, this greatest of all adventures, may it come to a culmination in this very lifetime of ours. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat 
श्रीराम कृष्णारपणमस्तु And next we'll have Muji giving us an invitation to freedom, awakening, a sense of being. Yeah, this is how it started, you see. And simply, I say, just for the duration of the time that we speak together, could I ask you that you don't mention the past, because it is not going to be helpful. Like what you have done before, what your practice has been in the past, no, we don't need it for now. If what you wish to discover is your true nature, then please, don't talk about past. Can we agree with this? Yes. yes. And let's not talk about in the future, in the future, I want to be a yoga teacher, I want to drop no, down. We don't need to hear about that. Let it just unfold. Would that be okay to say? Then I also ask, um, uh, whatever idea you have of who you are, whatever concepts you hold about yourself, could we just uh, not talk, just leave that, leave it aside for the moment, just for the short duration of this guidance? Can you do this? Then I say, then leave all these things. Already, if you are able to leave that, that is already something very great. Just leave it. Don't kill it. Don't try to fight it. Just leave it aside, as you well can do. Leave it aside, just for a short bit. And don't be expecting anything. Oh yes, wow, I'm, I'm really going to get... No. Just be empty. Just be empty. Don't even have in your mind the desire to be awakened. Just be just empty. Zero, zero. Drop everything, all your intention, all these things, just leave them aside for a moment. We can do this, Anand? You, sir? I can. Yes. And I say, don't worry. Hmm? If you leave them aside, at the end of the invitation, if you want them back, I can guarantee you they'll still be there. Nobody's going to steal your stuff. Not this stuff, okay? So we can relax with this for a moment. Just be empty, empty, empty. Even of, even of the concept of emptiness, just drop everything. Don't be waiting for what's next. Just stay as you are, empty. You're not a, con you're not a container. For ideas or concepts, just empty. So I had to invite you to this place where you're just not wearing any concepts or any fantasies. I'm not going to ask you to use your imagination or to visualize anything at all. Just be empty of it. So even if you feel that there's the mind is is jumping, it doesn't matter. Let it jump. At least it's to the side. You're not engaged with that. You're just here. Just, just pay attention to how you are here. You know you exist. You know that you are. But also, there is a sort of an awareness of your existence and like a, a sense of being. What is it that is here that does not belong to time? It's not a story. You're just here. Even the senses you're aware of, we're not suppressing the senses, but I'm not talking about the senses or the sense objects, but just the field of awareness itself. So I have to ask you just to be like this, so I can ask you just a few simple questions. 
about this. This that is here, is it an object? No. I would like you to just respond from, just respond. I don't have to think now, because the mind you have left aside now, your habits you have left aside, memory you have left aside, your possessions you have left aside, your dreams you have left aside, you are only here. What is here? I ask you, is it, is it an object? You say, no, it is not an object. Just stay as you are. Does it have any shape or size? No. Does it have history? No. Does it come with a story? Could it be captured in any way? Like say, suppose you have the most modern, scientifically perfect camera. Could it be photographed? Can it suffer depression or jealousy or fear? No. No, it just stays. Stay as you are. Can it fade? Is there any boundary beyond which it is not? Did you create it? No. Does it depend on your belief to exist? Did it come from anywhere? Is it possible that Knowing this, being aware of this, now if you fell asleep, when you wake up, it will disappear? Can it be kept? No. Okay. Now I ask you this one. Was it born? No. Then can it die? No. And finally, I may ask you, where is it? How far from you is it? How to get it? Where is it? A few centimeters away, a little bit over there somewhere. Where is it? How far from you is it? Somebody, I need to hear from you. You speak. No? Okay. So, would it be fair to say, are you in it? Or if it's no distance, it must be the same as where you are. So if this is the case, then all your responses and answers are about you. All your responses can only be about you. You say that it is no distance, it is not an object. It's not an object. How can you perceive something which is not an object? It has no date of birth. It cannot fade. It doesn't depend on your belief. It was not created. Is it still true? Can it be owned by any group of people and used against other people? No. no. Can it become sick? No. no. Can it be lost? No. no. Can the mind exist independent or outside of it? No. 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 How is it possible 
that you can know these things. How is it possible? Normally in life you are not asked questions like this. How can you ask, answer these questions? It's not coming from your mind, because if it's come from your mind, we will probably start disagreeing with each other and putting opinion. Is this an opinion? No. no. Is it a fantasy? No. A projection? No. No. Are you in a state of hypnosis? No. No. And how would you know? <laughs> so if all these things that you say are true, you are only giving evidence about your own self. Could it be like this? Yes. Then, if this is so, who is this other person in you? Let's not go into this for a moment. Let's just, <laughs> let's just say, as you are, in the light of this seeing, hmm, is this a disappointing discovery? No. At the back, no. it's not a disappointing discovery. Is it information? No. 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 At this point, I often say, "My God, you don't realize." what you have discovered. And it is fine, because the mind is still present somewhere within all of this. And it is going to come. And it is very cunning. It will say, Yes, that was a nice little experience, but let's get back to reality. It may say any number of things. But from this place of what I call isness, everything that is being perceived is just a movement in this immensity of seeing. They come and go. And you will still have the sensation of expanding inside your infiniteness. What to do? Simply remain as you are. Humped by just don't try to figure out anything because then you'll call your mind into play. It's not needed right now. And as much as you can, just keep listening to the invitation and confirming where you can. And by itself, effortlessly, naturally, spontaneously, intuitively, everything begins to flower in you. The depth, the maturity, the silence, the peace, the sense of universality, the openness, the falling away of fear, all of these things will begin to manifest much more clearly in you. But mind will come, and his play is to raise doubt in you. He will say, Yeah, that was yesterday, but today is, the isness is gone. What is that the same isness you said was eternal and uh, everywhere present? Yesterday it was, but today it's gone. And how can it go? Is the isness? It's a word. It's not. It doesn't know itself as isness. It doesn't have a name. It's my words. I say, for for want of a perfect word and not being able to find one, I say it's just what is. Yeah. Is the isness merely a feeling? Can it be created by memory? No. No. 
can it be lost? No. Did you fall asleep? I'm still standing. <laughs> Just to honor the promise I made that if you, by leaving your or suspending your ideas and thoughts about yourself, and then at the end of the exercise, you can reclaim, pick them up, you are free to do that, of course. The stuff that you say, I leave sign, you know, for whatever it is, you may reclaim your stuff, it's not in it. And next, we have Nomi, and Nomi talks about essential knowledge. True knowledge is essential. The nature of true knowledge is pure being. In true knowledge lies peace and liberation. Such knowledge is non-objective in its character. Therefore, the Maharshi has emphasized that one should know that one is the Self and not merely think, I am the Self. One should know the I, which is Brahman, and not merely think, I am Brahman. One should know that I am all that there is, and not merely think all this is Brahman or all this is the Self. Real knowledge is non-objective. When we think about something, there is always something. One's thoughts are always objective and seem to shine only by the reflected light of consciousness, which is real knowledge. Self-knowledge has nothing to do with thinking. It is neither thinking of something nor is it trying to think of nothing. It is the non-objective, hence thought transcendent, awareness of one's own nature. Whatever you would think of the self, it is not that. Who you are is inconceivable. You have never thought of yourself, nor will you ever think of yourself. What you are is forever non-objective. The non-objective is the eternal. Self-realization consists of such non-objective knowledge. And consequently, it also is eternal. If it is eternal, it is not lost at one time and attained at another but rather is quite beyond such considerations. For to speak of it as such would be like saying, 
I exist at one time, but I don't exist at another. The inquiry to know who you are consists of the very knowledge itself. Who am I? It is not thinking about who I am. It is knowing who I am. Within the context of thought, there are ever so many possible states and conditions, ranging from the sensory, which are a kind of thought, for they are only in the mind, to that which is more subtle. But you are not any of that. Nor are you in any of that. The non-objective never takes up a habitation in the objective. That is, the real does not take up a home in the unreal. Knowledge reveals, the inquiry reveals. Inquiring to determine your own nature. Do not so much try to think about yourself, rather discard all thought as being superfluous, utterly incapable of defining what in truth you are. Knowledge is not thought, knowledge is not gained by thought, just as it is not a sense perception and is not gained by the senses. Inquiry does not start with a thought. It certainly does not end with a thought. <coughs> its substance, its light, its purpose, its goal is only this knowledge. It is called knowledge, but it is not knowing of something. Nor in truth can it be divided into the duality of I know, I do not know, or ignorance and knowledge as they are commonly understood. With what light do you know yourself? By what means do you know that you exist, even now? What is it that has known everything there is to be known, inclusive of all thought, yet has never been known by any of that? Consider yourself as if on one side of the wall of thought and the self to be found on the other side of it is just another thought. So if you would have that conception, it should be utterly abandoned. As the Maharshi frequently instructed, for whom are the thoughts? Knowledge is of the very nature of the self. What can be said about the self? It exists. This cannot be said of anything else. It exists. Because the ideas of anything else are entirely based upon misidentification, the confusion regarding the nature of yourself, the inquiry aims, the knowledge aims in practice at the destruction of such misidentification. Mm -hmm. 
If misidentification ceases, bondage is found to be entirely unreal. There is no scope for ignorance and the samsara does not exist. Therefore, knowledge consists of knowing your identity to be only that, the self, and nothing but that. The dissolution of misidentification, or we may say the absorption of one's identity in that, as that itself, such is the knowledge. Who could possibly think of this? And now we will meditate for a little bit, breathing in and out, long, slow breaths. Notice the breath as it comes in and goes out. Now, notice that you exist. You exist and you know that you exist. And now inquire, investigate within yourself, within your actual experience right now and look within yourself. What does not come and go? What is always? Who knows this? Who am I? All right. Now let's close with a chant. Om Shanti 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 Om Peace Peace Peace
If this satsang was of interest to you, I have more for you. A free book site, a YouTube site, and my blog. The URLs will be on the screen next. This was the first of this series based on the Ramana Maharshi book, 40 Verses on Reality. We will continue with this book in the next session. Thank you for letting me share this teaching with you.